Beni Israel were getting very scared, very terrified. Their own kids are being taken from their houses. The boys specifically, some of the women are being kidnapped. It's getting very, very difficult in all of them. They voice their complaint to Musa alayhi salam. He tells them, Ista'inu billahi wasbiru. Hold tight, hold tight. Victory is coming, victory is on the doors. Bismillah. So all of a sudden, news comes. Allah knows exactly when this took place. But Islam is entering the palace of Fir'aun. So much so that the lady who was taking care of the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh, she was combing the hair of the daughter and then the comb fell. Very famous story. When the comb fell, she unconsciously said, Bismillah. So the, lady, the daughter of Pharaoh said, Bismillah. She's trying to help her out. You mean my dad, right? Like he's made a mistake with a name. Bismi Fir'aun. She said, do you know what? It's the over. Rabbi wa rabbuki wa rabbu abikillah. My Lord, your Lord, the Lord of abuki Allah. She told her, if you do not change what you said, aqulu lahu, quuli lahu. Go tell him. Okay, I'm going to go tell him. So she goes to her dad, Fir'aun. She tells him, you know what happened to my hairstylist today? She dropped a comb, dad. And she said, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, the Lord of Musa, and so on. So he brought that hairdresser. He said, what's up with the news that I'm hearing? From the inside, he's terrified. Like for Musa's effectiveness entered my own house. Allahu Akbar. So she tells him, yes, Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah. My Lord, your Lord is Allah. He tells her, if you insist, I'm giving you a chance. Woman, wake up, wake up. You know who you're talking to? You know what I do to people that do what you're doing? She said, my Lord, your Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happened after that? Musa alayhi salam, he was not present. She had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on her side. So he said, Amara bin like a big bowl of copper to be boiled. So he commanded that her kids be brought forth. So imagine that mother, she has all these kids. And then he tells her, you don't change what you're about to say. We will throw one child after the other. She said, Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah. Very strong, very steadfast. May Allah make us strong. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa some people, especially maybe the youngsters, they get excited like, Wallahi, if I was in that situation, I can't wait to be put in that situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, never ask Allah to be in such situation. لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو الرسول الله tells you don't you ever say I can't wait I want to go fight the enemy in the battle don't wish for that one of the reasons is that you don't know how your heart will be in that position you're saying while you relax on cushioned chairs dearborn you know nice air conditioned room you don't know how your heart is your true colors may Allah protect us so she tells him my lord and your lord is Allah so they grab the first child and they throw him into that boiling liquid and right before her eyes her child is dying Second child, third child. He got very tough, very tough, one after the other. Ah, change your mind. Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah. And look at the torture. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Until it reached the child she was holding. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فتقاعست. يعني, no, no, not him. There's a baby. Please, not to that point. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us his hadith. He says, that baby spoke. Like, oh, I wish babies can speak and help us out. The baby did not speak until she said it four or five times. Rabbi or Rabbuk Allah. Are you guys with me? Don't, a miracle will come your way, inshallah. Naam. A karama may come your way till this day. But it will not come in general until you show Allah you deserve it. May Allah allow us to understand that. فَبَعَدْ الْأَوَّلَ الثَّانِي ثِرْدْ فُورْدْ Okay, not this one. So then the baby spoke and look what he said. I want this sentence to be printed in our minds, engraved in our hearts, and I tried to repeat it today as I was rehearsing. I kept repeating, repeating. I want to remember it as much as I possibly can. Can we all give me your undivided attention, inshallah? Look to what the baby said. Ready? Shabab on the side. Salah ad ready? You need a seat? It's this Habib. Are you guys ready, inshallah? No distraction. Respect and adab, inshallah. Ready? That baby said, Ya ummah, mom, iqtahimi. Don't be hesitant. It's okay. They push you, don't push back. They push you, go. Ya Allah. 
One more time, one more time. فَإِنَّ عَذَابَ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ مِنْ عَذَابِ الْآخِرَةِ Mom, the pain of dunya, the pain of this life, is far less than the pain of the afterlife. Just remember that sentence. Especially when you're about to do a good deed, a wajib, or something that is haram. Remember, عَذَابِ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ so all you who says, oh, for example, something that comes to mind really quick is the whole aspect of hijab. Oh, the weather is very hot. I can't do this. I don't know how you guys do it. I can't. I'm not wearing it. Adab al-dunya is easier than adab al-akhirah. The heat of the sun is a lot easier to bear than jahannam. Oh, I can't wake up in the morning. I cannot pray fajr. Wake up fajr, struggle. Because the adab of the akhirah for not praying fajr is the crushing of the skull, as Rasulullah said. There's a rock that will be brought and crushes the head of those who intentionally miss fajr. And then the head, the skull will come back to normal. The ball is rolling. This is after death. This is barzakh, after life. They bring the rock, then the head goes back to normal. Then the head is being crushed again by the rock. The adab for those who intentionally, carelessly about fajr. May Allah protect us. So these things happen. So he says to his mom, Mom, don't hesitate. Be strong. You may say, Tab, why doesn't she just say, I kafart? We have the luxury, alhamdulillah. You have a gun placed on your head. You want to say hallelujah. You want to say mish'ar of ish. You don't say, Allah is not my God. You have that green light if your life is on the line. Don't ab abuse it. I don't see it possible in America. May Allah protect us. Other parts of the world, maybe. That luxury that we have, alhamdulillah. For, say alhamdulillah. At that time, you got to... Do something about it. You can't just say this. So she eventually was pushed. She did not hesitate. And she fell into that boiling liquid. And all the family has passed away. Who was there as some mufassirin say? Who was there? Besides the hairdresser of Fir'aun's daughter. Who was there and saw this? The wife of Fir'aun. Asiya radiallahu anha. Now, the wife of Pharaoh... Her whole life, she was hiding her iman. Her whole life. After the magicians were defeated, she was making dua, Oh Allah, grant victory to Musa and Harun. Ya Allah, protect Musa. She raised him. She helped him. She educated him. Musa inherited the akhlaq, the character of Asiya, the wife of Pharaoh. And I said it before, I said it again. Don't start saying, why did you not leave this loser? She didn't have the luxury to say, I'm going to file for divorce. No, she's going to file for death. It doesn't work like that. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So you have to appreciate some families do not have the luxury of other families. So don't apply your rules to other households. Understand the story, understand the situation, and accordingly help in understanding. So Asiya radiallahu anha, Fir'aun comes, he confronts her. He tells her, is it true what I'm hearing from these few individuals? She said, yes, I believe in la ilaha illallah. Fir'aun, not like any other time, usually would say, put her to prison, kill her right away. But this time it's very tough because you have to realize there's some individuals, if you take their lives, it brings an uprising. I hope that point is, came across clearly, inshallah. Certain people, if you kill, there's an uprising. I'm sure, wallahu alam, at least I had this question as I was preparing this. I was asking, why did Pharaoh not kill Musa from day one? Common sense question, you think? Well, they disagree with me. I had this question, why did he just kill Musa? Khalas. Why wait and wait and kill? Qatil abna'um, kill the sons. Why wait? Because, the ulama say, because there are certain people, if you kill, you will wake up the sleeping giant. And subhanAllah, looking at history and politics a little bit, you realize there are certain individuals in a community, in a city, in a country, when they get assassinated, everything goes, goes wrong. That's why usually a, le a leader or a ruler, when they want to kill a very high profile individual, usually it's uh, uh, undercover, right? It's not in the public. But if it was some random person, like, yeah, put him to prison, kill him, no one will ask about him. So that's why Musa is the last person Fir'aun wants to kill. The last one, literally. Right before that, it will be his wife. So then Fir'aun, just like usual, he asks his advisors. When he panics, ما تأمرون, yes, think. So he goes to his advisors, but he wants to do it differently. He says, ما رأيكم بآسيا? He asks his advisor, what do you guys think of Asia? What do you guys know of her? They don't know anything so far. In terms of her belief. She's, they said, oh, she's a great lady. You have a great wife, akhlaq, character, top notch. And he can't say, and he, he was, we, were, we were blessed to have her in the palace. Very understanding, very cooperative, very merciful, very kind. 
absolute perfection. And indeed, she's perfect, as Rasulullah said. Then he says to the advisors, Innaha ta'bud ghayri. He's telling them she worships someone other than me. One word they said, Uqtulha. Killer. Before a few seconds, she's great, she's one of a kind, you're blessed to have her, we have never seen anything, anything with her. Oh, you know, you, you might think, I actually thought about it, why would they say kill her? Like, why do you care? Because now when you're so associated to an oppressor, and please, all of you focus, may Allah grant you Jannah. When you hang out with a very bad guy for a long period of time, if he goes to prison, you're very likely going with him. So much of the influence they have on Fir'aun is not because they want the best for Fir'aun, because they know if you go down, we go down with you. So with Asya, we cannot afford giving her any chance to get this message go across the city and the land. So kill her, uqtulha. He takes this advice. He talks to her. You know what I'm doing. I'm about to do to you. La ilaha illallah. So Asya radiallahu anha is now being taken. The queen of Egypt is being taken by the soldiers into a desert, into an open land, away from the sight of people. Her hands and her legs were spread apart and she was, had pegs you know, tied around her hand where she would not be able to move. And Fir'aun commanded a, a, kabira, a large rock to be placed on a cliff of a mountain. Put Asiya right under that. And make her exposed to the heat of the sun. And see if she renounces her faith. If she takes back her faith, meaning she's my wife, bring her back to me. When Asarat and if she sticks to what she believes, then throw that rock at her. The one who was supervising this was the husband himself, Fir'aun. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah guide the husbands and may Allah guide the wives. Here Fir'aun goes to her, he said, do you change your mind? She says, La ilaha illallah. What kind of belief is that? A woman who's richer with all due respect than all of us put together. She had more money than all of us put together. Looks better than all of us put together. She's perfection. Rasulullah Sallam. Four women reached perfection. Reached perfection. And Asiya was one of the four. May Allah make, her meet, make us meet her in Jannah. Ya Rab. Perfection. Influence. Queen. Wealth. Looks. Everything. Dunya all in her hands. But she gave it all out for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe subhanallah. May Allah make the sister who gave the gold bracelet. You just saw that, right? Live, subhanAllah, un unrehearsed. That's all what I have, here you go. SubhanAllah, there's some uh, malamih, the signs of Asiya these days. May Allah grant us all Jannah, Ya Rab. She said, La ilaha illallah. He got so angry, he got so angry. Then she says, Rabbi, Rabbi ibn li indaka baytan fil Jannah. Ya Allah, build me next to you a house in Jannah. She chose the neighbor before she chose the house. She chose the neighbor before she chose the house. اختارت الجار قبل الدار. رَبِّ إِبْنِي لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ Protect me from Fir'aun al -zalim. Wallahi, I'm saying this and I wonder how many women in this country are saying this in their home. They just can't leave. For whatever reason that you may never know of. How many of them are making the dua of Asi anha Of the dhulam that she's facing in the house. She says, from Fir'aun and the evil doings of his. From who? Continue the ayah. Those who enable Fir'aun. Many times the Zalim is not alone. Fi awan, fi assistance around them. May Allah protect us and not make us one of them. And right then and there when she said that, the rock was pushed. The Mufassirin say, Allah took her soul before the rock hit her body. So the rock hit a body without a soul. And now she went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember Asiya radiallahu anha. Remember, let's go back in the years when she saw that little baby in the box. One life I can save, I will do everything I can. Let's go back. And it was baby Musa. Fir'aun tried to kill him. She says, li walak. Please, akunus of my eyes and your eyes. He said, no, please, I beg you. And she helped save his life. Then she taught him. She taught him. She fed him. He took from her akhlaq and manners and she believed in him. And she was humble. She struggled all the way to her last breath. But don't be too sad. She's in Jannah. And guess who's there? Guess who's there? Who is it? Ali Sot. The hairdresser was there. What? What are you doing, sister? Yeah, we're here together. 
Who was in Jannah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, عندما عرشت إلى السماء أسري بي إلى السماء إسراء والمعراج معراج عرشت إلى السماء means I went to the heavens and I saw Jannah. I had a beautiful fragrance that I smelled and experienced. So I asked Jibril, يا جبريل ما هذه الرائحة? What is this beautiful smell? He said, هذه ما شطط بنت فرعون وأولادها. This is the, the, the hairdresser and all her kids. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, you, like, you cry over them while they're smiling. Alhamdulillah, we should cry. We should feel sad. But no, those who قتلوا في سبيل الله are not amwat. They're not dead. Rather, they're alive. Ahya'un عند ربهم يرزقون. May Allah grant you all shahada. Say ameen. Even if you die in your beds, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sallallahu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Allah will give you the reward of a martyr even if you die in your bed. Why? Because of the niyyah. That you're willing to go as far as necessary for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taba'an Fir'aun, khalas, this is, the, this is the end for him. He's now about to lose his mind. My wife was insisting and she died. And now what is he going to do? The worst possible action. And I just shared it with you. What was it? To kill Musa. Let me kill Musa and let his Lord help him out today. It's over. Inni akhafu an yubaddila deenakum. I'm so scared that he will change the religion of this land. Aw an yudhira fil ardi fasad. He may be a terrorist in this land, destroying our country, destroying our nation. Subhanallah, history in a way repeats itself. Now who stands up? One of Fir'aun's relatives. Why? He is a mu'min, but he was hiding this entire time. And now he feels, I need to st step up. The wife of Pharaoh died, the hairdresser died, babies are being killed, Musa is about to be killed, I'm stepping in. Min ali Fir'aun yaktumu imana. A man from his relatives, close relatives, who was hiding his iman the whole time. Just for those who were remembering from the last session, some ulama said, this believer of the family is the same one that told Musa many years ago, run for your life, Fir'aun wants to kill you. Some say that was the same man that ran in Aqsa al-Madinah to Yasa. So then he came, he says, أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ You want to kill someone because they said Allah is their Lord. وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ And he came to you with signs and we all know that what he is saying is the truth. We all know that. Stop playing games. Enough saying corruption. Enough of that. Allahu Akbar, look at the strength. May Allah grant it to all of us. Say Ameen. May Allah give you the strength to defend your brother and sister when they are being disrespected in your presence. You want to know the reward? تعرف الأجر؟ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said من ذب عن عرض أخيه بالغيبة whoever defends the honor of their brother or sister while they're being backbitten in front of them Allah will protect their necks from hellfire. What does that mean? أعتق الله رقبته means if you do it once you will never go to hell. Never. Do it once. Someone says about such and such person, noble, respectful, muhtaram, a good man, a good woman. She's this, she, he's that. And that's far from the truth. And you're saying it for no reason? No. Ahtarami, with all the respect, this is not right. No. He doesn't say stuff like that. Abadan. Don't open your mouth like that again. You go firm, respectful, start to stop, and even defend. One guy, I said this after the session. He said, what if the guy who defends, you said in the lecture, if he defends, what happens? He will never go to... Hell, but what if he dies as a kafir? It's a good question. Because of that moment of defense, Allah will guide your entire life to that as a Muslim. Beautiful, sah? And that's how bad it is if you go against that. That's why one third, thulth al adab fil qabr min al ghiba wal namira. One third of the punishment in the grave is because of gossip and backbiting. And Rasulullah sallallahu he walked by the graveyard and he says, إِنَّهُمْ لَيُعَذَّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ بِكَبِيرٍ They're being tortured in the grave. But not for something that is big. No, it is big, but what he meant was not big. They thought it's light. It's no big deal. It's just a couple words I said about him and about her. But they're being punished not just in dunya, but also in the grave. You want more than this? Talk about snakes. يوم القيامة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said, that the one who used to backbite their brothers and sisters and speak very evil about them, there's no justification, not seeking counseling or advice, that body of the one speaking about them will be brought. It will be told to the backbiter, كُلْهُ مَيِّتَ كَمَا أَكَلْتَهُ حَيَّةً Eat that dead body the way you ate them alive. 
I can't. You have no option, Yawm Qiyamah. So Rasulullah says, so the mouth opens up, the upper lip reaches the nose, the lower lip, middle of the chest, and they open up this ma their mouth that big to swallow the body. And crying, yelling out loud, may Allah protect us. So this man, as rewarding, we all got excited, like today, all of us online, don't ever speak about brother so on so on. Because beautiful, may Allah bless you all. But watch, your, pick your fights by the way. Sometimes it's a waste of time. But same way, be careful of what you're saying. So this man stands up, he says, don't say that about him. He came with the proof, he came with the signs. What's wrong with you people? Malakum. Did Yusuf alayhi salam not come to this land? And what happened to our forefathers? Many of them did not believe in Yusuf. Did not believe in him. And look what, where they ended up being. A bunch of losers, and we know the punishment that they possibly may face. What's wrong with you? Pharaoh started to become sarcastic. He said, yeah, Haman. Haman, Haman, you're here. Yeah, Haman. Advisor, big shot. He's the construction manager. Ibn li sarha. Build me a skyscraper. Why? La'alli ablugh al-asbab. So I perhaps may find a road in the heavens, because he keeps saying, Rabbul Alameen, uh, the Lord of the heavens. So let me go to the heavens and see, Attali'u ila ilahi Musa, to see where's the Lord of Musa. Though I know he's a liar. When he started becoming sarcastic, that man didn't talk as much. And that's something Allah teaches us. When someone starts to mock the deen in front of you, you are obligated to take action. Khalas, you have to do something, you cannot stay silent. Otherwise, you'll be part of that circle. So you either defend, or you change the topic, or you walk away. What did Allah say? Until they change the conversation, you can come back. But never accept on yourself, Wallah, till the day you die, to be in a circle where Islam is being mocked. Because as Allah says, even in, uh, Allah says, then you are mithluhum, you're one of them. May Allah protect us. May Allah make us be able to defend. At minimum, at minimum. Just tell them to stop. At minimum, I gotta go. At minimum, but don't be in that gathering. May Allah protect you. After all of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, brothers and sisters, that he's gonna now send signs. I ask you a question. The sign of the snake and the hand, these two signs, were they painful to Pharaoh? Like, were they like, you know, hurting him or biting him or anything, or anyone? So Allah now is gonna send signs, but on the pain side. And that's something to share with you. Sometimes Allah will send you pain because to some people, that's how you go back to Allah. Some people require a tragedy, a calamity to return back to Allah. I pray to Allah that none of us have to go through that. But if that's what it takes and then Allah made it happen, then we say what? Alhamdulillah. And we accept. All of a sudden, now you're gonna kill Musa and the guy Alhamdulillah pushed back on Pharaoh and Allah protected this man. This man was not killed. All of a sudden, something strange happens. While they were in Egypt, Allah sends a third sign called as sinin as sinin and who Adam al-Matar. There's no rain, drought. Trees were, dry, were dying. The cattle were suffering and struggling. There's not much food. It's getting really, really, really bad. Pharaoh is you can, but like he's trying to be like, we got this, okay, we got some reserves, whatever the case is. Nothing is working. It's taking way too long. What do you think Pharaoh does? Pharaoh starts making dua to Musa. <laughs> he actually goes to Musa. Musa, we surrender. <laughs> I don't know how you stopped the rain, man. The snake was, was tough, but this was a whole other level. Please, begging, begging, vul, humiliation. It's working, alhamdulillah, in a way, they're being humbled. It's a good thing. Ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbak. Ask your Lord to lift this musibah. We, we want it to rain. It's not raining. This is a disaster. We're suffering. We're struggling. Please. And if you do, and the hardship is lifted, two things. The two things you told us. Number one, we will believe in you. We will believe in you. Number two, what is it? وَلَا نُرْسِلَنَّ مَعَكَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And we'll send Bani Israel free for all of you. Khalas, all of them. So what did Musa do? Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, make it rain. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, make it rain. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. 
Allahu Akbar, clouds are coming, it's raining, Allahu Akbar. So now, Fir'aun, repeat after me, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, Hidha hum yankuthun. They broke their promise. Wallahi, I'm not Fir'aun. Don't be like Fir'aun. Mom, mom, I'm so sorry. This is the last thing I'll do. Allah said, give me my phone back and I will never go to these websites. I will never go to this app. I promise, I promise, I promise. You promise? Wallahi, wallahi, akhir mar. Wallah. Okay, here we go. Hidha hum yankuthun. Break their promise. No, shka. Loss of crops. Rasulullah, Allah says in the Quran, وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Okay, next sign. Loss of crops. What does that mean? The, the tree that used to have, for example, a hundred apples, 99 are rotten, only one is good. This is abnormal, this is not normal. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا نُرِيهِم مِنْ آيَةٍ إِلَّا هِيَ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ أُخْتِهَا Every sign that comes is bigger than the one before. It was not raining, now there is rain, the apples will come, the dates will come from the palm trees, but only one is enough for you to eat. Fir'aun, again, arrogant, whatever, we're not going to eat, uh, it's fine, we can, we, can, we, can, we can fast, one date can be you know, shared. La, you can't do that, for how long? For how long? But guess what? They go to Musa. Musa. Every time. Musa. I'm not going to go seven times because there's seven more signs. Ya Musa, please, Ya Musa, please, ud'u lana rabbak. Make dua to your Lord. If he lifts this hardship, la nu'minanna lak, wa la nursilanna ma'aka bani Israel. We will all believe, we will send bani Israel with you. Promise, promise. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, make the crops come with quality. Not ruined and not expired. Ya Rabb, Alhamdulillah. The next season, things came back beautiful. Alhamdulillah. Idha hum yankuthun. They break their promise. Uh, not another sign. At-tufan. Akbar, worse than the ones before. This is sign number what? Sign number what? Five. The first two was the hand and the stick. Two. Now three, four, five. What's the total? Tis'i ayat. Nine. I kind of ruined the story, but it's okay. Right? So at-tufan. Flood. It was raining so hard. Streets flooded, homes flooded, they can't walk no more. Crops are now dead for sure because of the amount of water. Houses are being destroyed. Ya Musa! Ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbak, make dua to your Lord, please. If he lifts his hardship, we promise we will believe and we will send Bani Israel back with you. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, make it stop raining. Ya Allah, get rid of the flood. The water sinks into the ground, alhamdulillah. It stops raining very bad. Either home, yankuthun, breaks the promise. I just want to share with you something really quick. I hope I was trying to review this before I, I did it. Inshallah, it makes sense if I present it well. Every sign they reject, the punishment grows. So the way I'm just thinking about it is like someone's like, bro, if you, if you, if you say this one more time, I'm going to punch you. Don't punch anyone, obviously, right? Unless you have to. <laughs> All right, I'm going to punch you. He says something bad. Like, Whoa, what happened? It went back further. So there's more velocity, more power. He says something, oh, oh really? Okay, okay. Even subhanAllah, science or the physics, when you go very back like that, there's a, to a point, the more powerful the hit may be. That's why I want to remind all those who are oppressed, may Allah protect you all, and if there was any oppressors, hopefully not a single one of you, I want you to remember that the more you oppress, the bigger the punch will be at you. The bigger. Inna Allah la yumli la zalim. Ya zalim. Azlam. Oppressor. Go. Keep going. Hatta ida amsaka la yuflit. Because with the moment Allah grasps you or grabs you, there's no way out of it. It becomes very bad. Tufan comes. Nothing works. Next. Al jarad. Locusts or grasshoppers. What in the world? Thousands and millions of them. They come attack Egypt, Masr. Locusts all over the place. Okay, this is pretty bad. It's disgusting in itself, in a way, صح? Even though I know it's halal to eat. I understand, for those who may know the fiqh behind it. It's halal. Rasulullah Hassan was not a fan of eating it. It's halal. But when you have millions of them attacking you, it is disgusting. All over the place, all over your house, all over the cattle. Now what's bad is that they're eating the food. The vegetation, the fruits, the grass, destroying everything. Ya Musa! Ya Musa! Ud'u lana rabbak. Make dua to Allah, please, to live this. Ya Musa, please! Same thing, the grasshoppers, they all go away. And either whom? Remember the word, yankuthun, they break the promise. What's next? Lice, al qummal. One of the meanings of al qummal, one of the meanings is lice. So lice start developing over their bodies, skin. No, what is this? It's okay, it's okay, I can, I can handle. One hour, two, 
Oh, oh my God. Eggs hatching in the scalp. See, some of you are itching. Wallah, as I'm saying, subhanAllah. Oh my God. Ya Allah. Right? It is unbelievable. Lice all over the place. Their body is getting really bad. This is, this is nuts. This is not normal. Now it's attacking us physically. Ya Musa. <laughs> ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbak. I can imagine the scene. He's like, no, Ya Musa. Please, ud'u lana rabbak. If he lifts this from, one second. If he lifts this from us, Please, Ya Musa, please, especially this one, Ya Musa. Ya Rab, Ya Rab, lift the lice from them, Ya Allah, Al Qummal, Ya Rab. Everything goes away. Ida hum yankusun. Ya Allah. Abdafadah, frogs. Ribbit, ribbit. The books of Tafsir say that when Musa alayhi salam was talking to Fir'aun during the Qummal, the, this one right here, the lice, and Fir'aun, he told him, please make dua to Allah, and then he broke the promise. Right at the moment he broke the promise, ribbit, ribbit. So Allah sent the other sign. So then Musa tells Fir'aun, oh, watch what's waiting for you. So he says, what will a frog do? It's a bit cuter than a uh, grasshopper, right? No, rabbit, 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 hundreds of thousands of them. They say they don't even open a cup of water until there's a frog in it. They want to speak, how? It jumps into their mouth. They can't, they want to sleep. The locust didn't do much sound. Imagine, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit. Like, no, I want to sleep. Distress and anxiety. Sleep apnea is just getting so bad. Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Is destroying everything. Ya Musa! Ud'u lana rabbak. Make dua to your Lord. Please! Please, we beg you. If he lifts these frogs away from us, we want to have a normal life. We can't even sleep now. Even sleep is gone. Please. He makes dua. Everything is lifted. Ida hum. Yankuthun. They break their promise again. And here, finally, Allah sends the last sign. Adam. Blood. There's not a source of water anywhere except that it turns to blood. And you have to appreciate something. We don't go too deep into it, but the value of water, do not waste water. Why am I emphasizing? Out of all the signs, Allah says every sign is akbaru min ukhtuha. You may say it's only alhamdulillah, it's not lice, but when you don't have water, it's the end of life. This is a sign of end. So the Fir'aun and the people, they see the Nile River, their access to it, blood. The wells, al-bi'r, blood. So what do they say? Let's go back to our containers. Alhamdulillah, we saved something, right? They go back to the containers. It also became blood. This was the toughest. Lips are being ripped apart. Dry skin, dehydration in Egypt. They're losing their consciousness. It's getting very bad. Ya Musa, ud'u lana rabbak. Please, Musa, please, this one, please. He makes dua. The blood turns to water. Everything goes back to normal. Ida hum yankuthun. But this time it's over. It's pretty much it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends revelation to Musa alayhi salam. What's that revelation? Go you and Bani Israel. Stay in your homes. Qibla. And pray as much as possible. Subhanallah. When there's an emphasis on ibadah, that means there's something happening very soon. May Allah protect us. That's why during the times of fitna, do ibadah as much as you can so Allah can protect you. That means something big is happening, about to happen. So you and Bani Israel, stay in your houses. No one leaves unless it's an urgent matter. And get prepared. Okay. Musa goes to house by house, house by house. This is what Allah told me. Something is about to happen. Everybody get ready. Get ready, pack your stuff. I don't know when the command is for us to go. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells to Musa alayhi salam, it is time for you to leave. When? Nighttime. When things are quiet, Pharaoh and his soldiers in a way are sleeping, that's when you take every possible mean and you run for your life as fast and as quiet as you can without anyone noticing. But you know what Allah tells Musa? Innakum muttaba'un. Musa, the moment you leave, it's a matter of time till Pharaoh gets to know. So run as fast as possible. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So they go, they pack their stuff, very quiet, not much light or fire to show the way because they don't want the soldiers to know about their escape. 
and they're traveling and they're traveling until they went to a point which is a bit interesting. There's a water body in front of them. They travel, mushriqeen also means east. So they reached a point where the water is right in front of them and Musa is there. So they're like wondering, okay, well, what's the next plan? Now, according to Musa and the revelation, you go this way and that's how far I go. That's what Allah told him to do. So they're getting a little bit nervous. Okay, are we going to take any action now? Like, what, what's, what's, what's going on here? So then, Fra'un, sorry, Musa, السلام, he maintained his uh, posture. Everything is well. Everything will be fine. Allah is going to reveal it to me. What we'll do next? I don't know what's going to happen next. Just hold on. Now, what happens? Fra'un hears about this. So Fra'un sends a whole message to every single male in Egypt who is big enough, old enough to be in an army. That's how bad this man was. And you know what he says? These people are nobody. It's a bunch of nobodies running for their lives. How can they not ask for permission? He's obsessed about permission, this guy. Right? How can they not tell me? How did they not do this to me? How dare they, they do this? I'm not stupid. No, you're stupid. <laughs> it's okay, accept it. He's like, I knew, I knew this was being planned. Some people do that. Right? No, you did not know this was going to happen. Stop saying, I knew it. I told you, purchase this stock. I told you, sell this thing. I knew it. No, he didn't know. He just guessed or whatever the case may be. He said, So right away, they assembled the army. So then they went east and they went towards Musa السلام, and the Bani Israel. Now what did Bani Israel do? They're seeing some dust. Who's, who's coming? Oh my God, it's a big group. Oh my goodness, it's Fra'aun. What did they say? Inna lamudrakun. We're done. We're done, Musa. What, was, what kind of plan is this? What kind of plan is to go to the beach and say, like, wait, what, what kind of plan is this? What did Musa السلام, say? Kalla, no. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah is with me. He will guide me. It's a little bit different than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I take you back a little bit with Sira to appreciate the statement. In Sira, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi was in the cave, right? With who? Uh, Abu Bakr, Ahsant. Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. When the people, the Kufar Quraysh, were surrounding the cave, what did Abu Bakr say? Ya Rasulullah, if one of them looks down, he would, they would see us, so they would kill us. So he's saying this out of concern, not out of losing hope or uh, criticizing Rasulullah. The Prophet sallallahu says, Inna Allaha ma'i? Inna Allaha ma'ana. أنت تستحق أن الله يكون معك. إن الله معنا. Allah is with us. But here, for the way they behaved, he says, كلا إن معي ربي سيهدين. And obviously, him means includes the believers and Harun عليه السلام. إن معي ربي سيهدين. And you have to appreciate the progress. You have to appreciate it, right? We just had a parent-teacher conference. May Allah bless all our teachers. Say Amin. May Allah grant them Jannah. Say Amin. And a round of applause to all teachers. Really, Wallahi. Allah barik fikr. So, so, so we, have, we, have, we, have, we have several teachers here, right? And may Allah make it easy with the students over there, <laughs> right? Now, the teachers, we said it this week, so what they did, they had the progress report for my daughter, so I went there. So, mashallah, she started here, and then she grew this way, and then she went, mashallah, here, and mashallah, she's about to reach the target. So there's growth. The growth of Musa, alayhi salam, let me take you back a little bit. The first time he saw the stick turning to a snake, he ran for his life, correct? First stage, progress. Okay, he's getting there. Next stage, in the stadium full of snakes, he got scared, but he did not run away. He did not run away. This is the most terrifying of all three. This is the scariest moment, yes? And he did not even get scared. Progress. So when you're attending a lecture, you leave, you're like, I, did, I do good day one, day two, but I just feel like my iman, it's okay. I'm not saying it's okay that it draws, but it's okay. It takes time. You're trying to re le learn the Quran. Alif, Lam, Mim, Alhamdu, you're struggling. It takes time. Musa alayhi salam, years till he, reached, he reached this point. Musa never said, Kalla, no, Allah is with me. Fir'aun is about to kill him. Ocean is in front of him. But he said, no, Allah is with me. It's progress. Don't expect you see people reaching this top and some of us want to reach there overnight. La. Don't think you will take the leadership, the top position overnight. It takes work. It takes struggle. It takes 
Patience, it takes you to fall, stand up, fall, stand up. Being embarrassed sometimes, fix your mistakes, then you grow and further and further. May Allah make you all successful. Say, Ameen. So he says, Kalla inna ma'i rabbi sayahdeen. All of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands Musa for that last scene when he says, with your staff, hit the seashore. What? Hit the seashore. Where's the staff? Hit the seashore. And he does it and he listens to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, each side became a tower of water. Allahu Akbar. And if you put your hand into it, it's water. It's like a mountain. And what happened? Musa alayhi salam telling the Bani Israel, let's go. Go through this path. Go through this mamar. Let's go. And they're all going. And you have to appreciate there's older ladies, there's old men, there's kids. So you'll do whatever it takes. Ya akhi, yalla, yalla, Allah barik fiq, let's go. Fir'aun is here, let's go. Whatever it takes, you have to go, 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 go. And Fir'aun sees this. Wallahi, you would imagine. You have to say, la ilaha illallah. Yani. Khawas, it's, it's over. And a whole ocean was split in front of your eyes. And they all pass. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, so Musa, last one. Go, 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 go. Okay. Allah says, don't. Why? Allah is waiting for Fir'aun to attempt. So Musa wants to strike it, so it goes, oh, he's on the other side, let's just run. No, Allah said, wait. Allah is Rahman, Rahim, but he's Shadid al Aqab. Allah is very kind, very merciful, but he has severe punishment too. He's both, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Fir'aun, he sees them all going through, so he said, let's do this. Some of them think you're crazy. Even the soldiers, like, they went, go, go, no, let's go. And he goes after them. And as they're going and going and going, Allah now commands the water to fall and crush on Fir'aun. Fir'aun, this zalim, this oppressor, 60 plus years of rulership, focus it in, send a malik. Now it's being faded away. All the dunya that he had is being gone. He's drowning. The water is smacking him right and left. He'd probably be able to swim, but he can't with the strength of that water. He's trying to get up. He's trying to speak. He cannot. Guess what he's saying? Amantu. I believe in the Lord of the people of Bani Israel in which they worship. Look how long left. I believe in the Lord of the people of Bani Israel whom they worship. So then Allah says, Now? After all what she did, now? No, it's over. Why, brother? Isn't Allah Ghafur Rahim? Yeah, but there's two moments in life where Allah will no longer accept your apology or astaghfirullah. It's rejected back to you. The first one is when the sun rises from the west, which never happened yet. The second one, in the gargara, in your last moments of life, <gasps> that moment you cannot say Astaghfirullah, Ashhadu Allah. Allah will not accept that. One of the things is because that's when you see the reality of life, and that's when you see the angel of death. death. So the angel of death already told Fir'aun, Ya ayyatuha nafsul khabitha, O you filthy soul, it's your time has come. Return back to your Lord, Ghadban, angry and has the wrath upon you. Astaghfirullah, it's too late. al an. Wallah, isn't it painful? When you're told, now, now you want to say, I'm sorry. How many times I told you, don't use your phone when driving? Get into an accident. I'm sorry. al an. How many times you were told, don't get into drugs, go into with these friends. And guess what? You need to, you need to get bailed out of prison now. al an. Is that what it takes for you to wake up? al an. Wallah, it's very painful. al an. May Allah never make any one of you hear it. Say, Ameen. Al-an. Our life, alhamdulillah, is still there. Repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fir'aun is dead. Drowns. But Allah saves his body. Allah says, we will make you a sign, an example to the people that come after you. Liman khalfaka ayah. And I want you to imagine. Musa alayhi salam tells Bani Israel to hold on. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. The body of Fir'aun floats. And they're seeing this. What an end. Wow. And I want you to remember that scene.
for all those who are being wronged at whatever capacity, whether at a family capacity, a government capacity, nation's capacity, a zalim, the oppressor, will always get caught. Whether during your lifetime or after. But wallahi, Allah will never let your rights go just like that. And it will happen. And Allah is our witness. May Allah protect us all. Say ameen. The body is floating right before their eyes. Allah has fulfilled His promise. Agreed? Allah fulfilled His promise to the oppressed and towards the oppressors. And what a beautiful moment, a successful moment. Musa alayhi salam is happy. People are cheering. People are excited. And alhamdulillah, 9.43. We still got two minutes left. But you're like, bro, do we not have a whole other session on December 10? So didn't you just finish the story? What do you know about Bani Israel? <laughs> Only if you know what was the first thing they did. The first thing after they left and they saw with their eyes what Allah did to Fir'aun. They saw something and they said something back to Musa. Yani something makes it, you have white hair. Like, how? Like, how do you think? Do you know what they said? Do you want to know what they're going to say? Do you know what will happen? December 10, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs>